All right, a pleasant good morning to all. Uh, welcome again to Redeem Fundamental Baptist Church. And uh, this morning we are so thankful again to be in the house of God as we sing and honor and glorify the Lord and to hear from His word. At this time, as we take our hymnals, turn to hymn number 131, hymn number 131, as we sing, Leaning on the Everlasting <coughs> Arms. Leaning on the Everlasting Arms. Exalted, 
Father, we know, Lord, that we are living in such perilous times. We know, Lord, that things are changing, O oh Lord. We are living, O oh Lord, in uh, changes, O oh Lord, in, in, in our social environment. And Father, Lord, we are living, O oh Lord, in the last days. We believe according to your word. But I pray, O oh Lord, Father, that your word will continue to meet the needs of individual, that you will continue to meet our needs. And most of all, Lord, may souls come to know you as Lord and as Savior. Lord, we want to give you praise and honor and glory. Thank you, O Lord, for your blessings upon every life. I pray, O Lord, that these few words, Lord, that this short time that we spend here this morning would be a blessing and encouragement. O Lord, a rebuke, a reproof to some heart today, even my own. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And amen. Let's continue to sing as we sing hymn number 155. Hymn number 155, Like a River Glorious as we sing as unto the honor and glory of God today. Like a river glorious.
Uh, just remember our regular services, we have a devotional time at 6.30 from Monday through Friday. Also, we are thankful for our Wednesday night Bible study as well as our prayer meeting night. It starts at 7 o'clock and we want to thank God in a special way for all those who will continue to join in via Zoom. And for all those of you this morning who are joining us live on Facebook, we want to thank God for you all as well. And what a blessing it is to serve God in these trying days. All right, and as we continue to do so, we know things are opening up back here in Trinidad and Tobago. And uh, we want to thank God in a special way uh, for the liberty that He has given to us, uh, even to spread the word of God as we are just awaiting things to reopen. And uh, we are ready and we equip uh, to go out into the highways and byways and proclaim the truth of the word of God. Uh, we would continue with our open air meetings and the sharing out of tracts and flyers and uh, by God's grace I trust that the word of God will reach out to the general public even right here in Mayaro and in Byron's and elsewhere as we are joined our other churches to do the same all right so come to pray for us as we will continue to do what God wants us to do all right um, <clears throat> let's sing a couple of choruses this morning as we sing as the deer panteth after the water brooks so panted my soul after thee, O God. As the dead panted for the water, so my soul longeth after thee. You alone are my heart, desire, and I long to worship thee. You saints do ye not know that the saints shall judge the world and if the world shall be judged by you are ye not are ye unworthy to judge the smallest matters know ye not that we shall judge angels how much more things that pertain to this life if then ye have judgments of things pertaining to this life set them to judge who are least esteemed in the church. I speak to your shame. It is so that there is not a wise man amongst you, no, not one that shall be able to judge between his brethren. But brother goeth to law with brother, and that before the unbelievers. Now therefore, 
there is utterly a fault among you because ye go to law one with another <coughs> why do ye not rather take wrong why do ye not rather suffer yourselves to be defrauded nay you do wrong and defraud and that your brethren know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God be not deceived <coughs> neither fornicators nor idolaters nor adulterers <coughs> nor effeminate <coughs> nor abusers of themselves with mankind nor thieves nor covetous nor drunkards nor revilers nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God and such were some of you but he are washed but he has sanctified but he are justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of our God. We want to thank God this morning for his precious word. You all may kindly have your seats at this point in time. <clears throat> this morning, as we look into the word of God, we are reminded about some things that we are seeing happening in our day and age, the things that we take for granted as a church and things also that is accepted by our society, but things that the Bible is very clear cut on. I want to, just by way of introduction this morning, someone said, if you tell a lie big enough and keep repeating it, people will eventually come to believe it. The lie can be maintained only for such time as the state can shield the people from the political, economic, and or military consequences of the lie. If thus becomes vitally important, for the state to use all of its powers to repress, dissent, for the truth is the mortal enemy of the lie, and thus by extension, the truth is the greatest enemy of the state. The truth is the greatest enemy of the state. If you tell a lie long, big enough, and keep repeating it, people will eventually come to believe it. So says Joseph Goblitz, Goblitz, the Nazi propaganda chief of staff. It was also Winston Churchill, Sir Winston Churchill, who said, truth is the most valuable thing. In fact, it is so valuable that it's often protected or guarded by a bodyguard of lies. Truth is the most valuable thing. In fact, it is so valuable. It is often protected or guarded by a bodyguard of lies. And that is so true. We look at this morning as we read our text in 1 Corinthians chapter number 6, in verse 9 to verse 10, the Apostle Paul gives us 10 lies told for too long. This morning, as we look at lies told for too long, the Apostle Paul gives us 10 lies told for too long, but however, today, however, we are going to look at one of them. Just one of them we would look at this morning. <clears throat> the Apostle Paul, knowing not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God, this question, in the discussion that he is referring to from verse 1, he goes on to, under, to, to give the situation between brother versus brother. Brother was taking brother spiritually, taking each other to law to have their rights. In the discussion regarding litigation, which Christians were resorting to against Christians before judges of state, Paul calls the secular judges unjust or unrighteous in verse 1, and unbelievers, he calls them in verse number 6. No, you're not reading something else. This is the word of God. 
This is what the word of God tells us. That brethren at that time in the first century in the, in the church at Corinth, they were going to war with each other, carrying each other to, to law, and to taking them before unjust judges to have their matters straightened out so that they could be right in the eyes of man and eyes in the courts of law. But in truth and in fact, they were expressing something that was a far greater concern to the Apostle Paul and to the church that he was addressing here. But he calls, however, he calls the people that you were going to for justice and judgment, he calls them unjust and unbelievers. Both are designations of unbelievers. The secular judges are expected to be administrators of, of justice, yet scripture designates them as unjust. This is because their sense of justice is not of God, but as a social justice rather than divine endowment resulting from faith and the new birth. It is not according to the justice of God, but it is simply to appease the social justice, it is simply to appease what is done here on earth. And rightly, the scripture admonishes to pray for those in authority that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in the sight of all men. But nonetheless, not regarding all things being equal, he calls them unjust. They were going and harming according to human justice, they were, they were going about, and really and truly, the righteous was going about and seeking secular justice. According to the philosophy of this world, it's not to harm another is to be righteous according to secular philosophy. Not to harm one another is to be righteous according to secular philosophy. Christ sought and his teachings was to the scribes and Pharisees, and he said to them that this was insufficient to satisfy the righteousness of God. It's not just to appease the human side of it, but far it goes far deeper. In fact, in Matthew chapter 5 and verse number 20, the Lord Jesus Christ speaking to the rich young ruler, he says, Except your righteousness exceed that of the scribes and Pharisees, ye shall in no wise enter into the kingdom of heaven. Except your righteousness exceed the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees, ye shall in no case enter into the kingdom of heaven. Notice the Apostle Paul says, he shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven. Twice he is saying that in verse 9 and also in verse 10. Notice the Bible is very specific when it comes to this. You shall not enter. Today we live in a society that is deemed tolerant. And if it is that you speak the truth, although you speak the truth in love and you go against what is accepted as norm in our society, you are regarded as somebody who is hateful, you are regarded as somebody who don't have any love, you are regarded as somebody who is against human thinking and social justice. That's what our society embraces. But here is the crux of the argument. The unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God. He used the words shall not as we will look at the number one thing that we are going to talk about this morning. The Apostle Paul mentioned in the crux of his argument, he says, the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God. He used the words shall not, meaning they will neither enter into the kingdom of God nor receive the wonderful benefits of it which they would have had if they truly believe and practice the teachings of the word of God. He says they shall not enter. In other words, they will never or absolutely not inherit. That's the exact meaning of the word. 
they will absolutely not enter that strong words by the Apostle Paul. You tell that to today's society, I've heard preachers on the streets as they proclaim the love of God, as they talk to crowds as they pass by, and they proclaim the love of God by simply telling people the truth about their condition, about their lost estate, about the life that they are practicing, about the, in, uh, the, the, the relationships that they have, about the things that they think about that is accepted by government, that is, that is constitutionally correct, but by divine standard, it is against the word of God. And one day man must stand before the judgment of God and give an account of himself. Regardless of what society says, regardless of what mainstream Christianity may believe, regardless of what government may put in their policies as constitution, the truth of the word of God is here and amen in Christ Jesus and must be carried out. In both verse 9 and verse 10, the verb that is used for Participation in the kingdom of God is the word inherit. Inherit, meaning it is not earned or worked for, but it is inherited. The, the rich young ruler said, Good master, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? He came to Christ. With this burning question on his mind, with one of pride, because he had figured out that he had kept all the commandments, so legally he was right according to the law. He knew how to dot all the I's and cross all the T's, but by practice and the condition of his heart was far from what he said that he hold to. And so this rich young ruler learned in the book of Matthew chapter 19 and verse 16 as he came to Jesus and he said, Good master, he calls Christ good. And he says, What good thing shall I do that I may inherit eternal life? And Christ told him what he must do. Christ said to him, Sell all and give to the poor and come and follow me. Christ said, If you want to follow me, if you want to inherit eternal life, if you want to gain access into the kingdom of God, go and sell all you have and come follow me. The Bible tells us he walked away very sad because he was very rich. And Christ exclaimed, how hard it is for a, right, a, right, a, a, a rich man to enter into the kingdom of God. It's difficult. It is not how much we can do, it is not how much we can give, but it is in following Him who is the embodiment of truth, justice, love, and mercy that entrance is granted into the kingdom of God. Paul said that he shall not inherit. Entrance is granted if one receives the gift of the Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible tells us it is a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. So this gift must be received. It is something that we get by inheritance, by placing our faith and trust in Christ, and it is nothing that we could do to work for it. We can't give plenty to the poor. We can't be good, upright, moral citizens and expect to enter into the kingdom of God. It is not how one gain access into the kingdom of God. In fact, Christ told this young ruler, except your righteousness exceeds that of the scribes and Pharisees, he shall in no wise enter into the kingdom of God. In other words, you must be righteous, more righteous than the most righteous people of the day. That's what he was saying. But how could you get more righteous than the most righteous in society? The Bible tells us in Romans chapter 3 verse 23, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. It's as simple as that. It is coming to God and saying, Lord, I agree 
that I have offended the justice of God, that Lord, I have offended you, that I am a disaster when it comes to, day, to, to keeping my life, to keeping myself straight, for keeping my thinking straight. Lord, I've sinned inwardly. Lord, I've sinned externally. Lord, I've sinned in thoughts and words and actions. Lord, I've sinned and I'm failing in every count. And Lord, I'm coming to you because there's nothing that I can do to merit your goodness and your favor. And there's nothing that I can give you. There's not a, not a prize big enough. There's not anything that I could bribe you with to gain access into the kingdom of God. There's nothing. The Bible tells us, for by grace are we saved through faith. And that not of yourselves, it is a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. So there is no boasting before God when one gets access into the kingdom of God. Nobody who gets access into an entrance into the kingdom of God could stand before God and say, I have earned my way here. I have won my way into the kingdom of God because I have done more good than bad. My good outweigh my bad. Therefore, you must let me enter into the kingdom of God. The scripture says, no, that's not God's standard. It is the only standard by which we gain access is by faith through the blood of Jesus Christ. It's the only way that we can get to heaven. Submitting ourselves and saying, Lord, you take full control. But here is something that the Apostle Paul is addressing here as he, he says, No one, they shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Talking about the ten items, ten actions here that he was mentioning in the book of 1 Corinthians. And he says, Entrance is granted if one receives the gift given by Jesus Christ by faith. That's it. We want to thank God this morning that we have in our hands the Word of God, that here is something that we stand for, here is something that we could believe because it is a truth that has been well established by God himself and one that has been practiced by the early church, one that biblical Christianity stands for and it is the unadulterated word of God. Here is one of the lies told for too long. Many people say, I have the right to live my life as long as my faith in God is sincere, then no one should judge me. Let me say that again. I have the right to live my life as long as my faith in God is sincere, then no one should judge me. In other words, nobody should tell me how to live my life so I can live as how I may choose to live it, as long as it seems good in my eyes, as long as I think that I am sincere in my heart and my devotion to God, then no one should be able to judge me because God knows what is in my heart, God knows who I am, God knows exactly how I pray in the morning. God knows that I would go to church sometimes. God knows that what I give to church and all of that. So nobody can judge me based upon how I live my life. It all depends on what I believe. And God is a God of love. God is a God of love. That is absolutely true. God is a God of love. Hence the reason he says in his word and he gives us instructions how to live 
so that we can evade the wrath of God in time to come. God gives us instructions, spells it out very clearly, so that we would be able to live a life consistent with His Word and not be in contradiction to His Word, lest by any means we face the wrath of God when we stand before Him. The Bible gives us numerous examples, numerous examples as how we ought to live before a holy God. God is holy. We don't set standards and parameters for ourselves of righteousness and holiness. We are not able and capable to set these righteous standards for ourselves. In fact, we are always contrary to what God says to do in His Word. So therefore, He sets the boundaries of righteousness and true holiness. And therefore, as human beings, we must be able to adhere to His Word because we will get ourselves in trouble. It does not matter what many people and the crowd believes. As long as many people accept it, and this is what society thinks, therefore it's right, it's not. It's not. Here are a couple divisive statements to note. Speaking about Pride Month, celebrated annually around the world by the LGBTQ plus community. He said pride stands for courage. It stands for justice. And most of all, it stands for love. As we recall the trials the LGBTQ plus community has endured and celebrate the trailblazers who bravely fought for equality. Let us recommit to the work that remains. Happy Pride Month, says U.S. President Joe Biden. U.S. President Joe Biden. He says Pride stands for courage, it stands for justice, and most of all it stands for love. Not too long ago, there was an interview by CNC3, and I will no, by no means go into any details at this point in time, but a couple members of the LGBTQ community was interviewed, and the co-chair of the LGBTQ plus community in Trinidad and Tobago, interviewed by CNC3 on the morning brew. And he labels the adherents of Christianity as holding on to archaic beliefs. Holding on to archaic beliefs. He says that there is a certain sect of our society, a religious group in particular, he says he wants to be very clear, and he says a particular religious group of this country who is opposed to their right and their belief. I believe that this group came out when in Pride Month the U.S. Embassy hoisted the Pride flag on their compound. May I say this morning, without saying too much, that as a church, the scripture tells us to love, love. And by God's grace, we ought to do just that. We ought to preach the truth of God in love. Many people would not take it as love because we might call some things that the Bible wants us to call things that might not fit in well with mainstream Christianity because as they 
says a lot of Christian, a lot of the Christian community is all for love and they are supposed to have some meeting thereafter with certain religious organizations uh, because they are all on the same page with them and they are coming in a spirit of unity and love. May I say the truth. Without truth, there can be no genuine love. The truth and love are interconnected. The scripture tells us in 1 Corinthians chapter number 6, the Apostle Paul, as you look at the latter part of verse 9, he says, No, adult, no adulterers, nor effeminate, nor abusers of themselves with mankind shall inherit the latter parts of verse 10, shall inherit the kingdom of God. He said it in verse 9, he calls on righteous judges, and then he says these people who practice these things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Notice he says that they shall not inherit, as I said before, as I explained what the word not inherit means, they shall never ever enter into the kingdom of God. He says that's harsh, but he names specifically certain things and certain actions. If people are practicing these actions, they will not be able to inherit the kingdom of God. Passive homosexuality. He says no effeminate. It means soft ones. These are men who allow themselves as if they were women, that is passive his homosexuality. Men who allow themselves to be used as women. He says, no effeminate. That is exactly what the scripture is talking about. Some people use the argument and say, Christ did not address this issue of homosexuality. He did not. But if you would notice in Matthew chapter 5, Matthew chapter 12, the Lord Jesus Christ gave the foundation of the human family and he says from the beginning it was not so as he was addressing divorce, but also in that statement he was giving the foundation for every family upon the face of the earth. Now we have redefined what a family should be. It's not a man and a woman anymore. It is two people raising children. It could be two men, two women. That is what is defined as a family. And that is contrary from the scriptures. And the scripture tells us, the Lord himself says, from the very beginning, I have set the foundation of the human family. One of the, the first institutions that was set up by God himself was the institution of the family. Because as a result of the family come the community and society. Everything is built on the family. If you have a breakdown in family, then you have a breakdown in society. Then you have a breakdown in homes. You have a breakdown in every aspect of society. If the family is going haywire, so will the community be as well. And the country by extension. Trinidad and Tobago don't have an economic problem. We have, an, we have a moral problem. A moral problem. What we see happening all around us are simply symptoms of a much larger problem that we are facing. He says, no effeminate. And then he says, no abusers of themselves with mankind. No homosexuals, more specifically. Male and a bed, meaning a man who lies in bed with another male. A man who lies in bed with another male. Romans chapter number 1 and verse 27. Romans chapter number 1 and verse number 27 tells us, as the Apostle Paul likewise 
he's addressing the same issue. He says, and likewise also, the men leaving the natural use of the woman burn in their lust one towards another, men with men, working that which is unseemly and receiving in themselves that recompense of their error which was meet. He says, even and even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient. It's a judgment set by Almighty God. What you see in society is really a judgment from God. He says being filled with all unrighteousness. Notice he lists fornication, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, debate, deceit, malignity, whisperers, backbiters, haters of God, despiteful, proud, boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents, without natural, without understanding. Covenant breakers, without natural affection, implacable, unmerciful, who knowing the judgment of God, that they which commit such things are worthy of death, not only do the same, here is the last part, but have pleasure in them that do them. Have pleasure in them that do them. He says the wrath of God is revealed from heaven. Here is the wrath of God. What's the wrath of God? It's against such practices. Did Christ die for the sins of the whole world? Yes, he did. Does God, God love every human being? Yes, he does. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That's a given in the Bible. Does God love our sins? No, he doesn't. Does he want us to turn away from it? Yes, he does. But not because, not because many people accept any particular lifestyle, whether it be they of the LGBTQ plus community or any lifestyle as a matter of fact that the Apostle Paul speaks about. None of it, it doesn't matter what government law would pass, it is not accepted by divine standards. We can dodge human judges. We can be right when it comes to the law. We can be constitutionally correct in the eyes of man. We can clamor for social, social, social justice and human rights and equality. But is that what God wants from a society? Is that what God requires from any society, from any family? By God's grace, if you are looking at this this morning, I trust by God's grace that your heart will be softened by the word of God. Listen, this is not hate against anybody. This is not preaching hate against any society or against any community. But this is just telling the truth of the word of God in love so that you would miss the wrath of God because coming one day is the judgment of God upon anybody. Any individual, any society, no government, even those in the government of Trinidad and Tobago must stand before God and give an account of themselves before a holy God. Without exception, whether it be the Prime Minister, members of his cabinet, opposition leader or leaders, pastors, priests, bishops, any member of the business community, we must all stand before the judgment of God. As a believer before the, uh, the judgment seat of Christ and as an unbeliever before the great white throne judgment. But all will stand in judgment. My purpose this morning very simply is to warn any individuals against this lie that has been propagated by society that I have the right to live my life as long as I have faith in God. My faith in God is sincere. Then no one should judge me. 
No one should judge the way that I live because my heart is sincere before God. But may I ask you this morning, is that what God said is his word? Is that what the scripture says? From Genesis to Revelation, the scripture is very clear. Yet still there are people who practice certain lifestyle are brave enough to say that they are Christians and they have faith in God too. May I ask you this morning very humbly, would you consider these passages this morning? Would you consider what the Word of God is even trying to say? And with an honest and hope and open heart say, could I be wrong? I know my feelings are telling me that this is what I want to engage in, but way down in the deep recesses of my heart, something is telling me it's not right. At least would you examine the still small voice that God is speaking to you? That God wants to get your attention? It doesn't matter who is going on and who is clamoring for change and social justice and equality and for human rights and all of that and members of the government and who are alluding to it and who is clamoring behind it and certain people that I will not name right now of society. Could I ask you this morning that here are lies that has been told, lies that have been told for a very long time and people start believing it. People start to believe it. It is one of the things, it is one of the things that people have done over the years. It is one of the things that Hitler and his movement have embarked, had embarked upon to control the minds of the population. If you tell a big lie, not small ones, but if you tell a big lie long enough, people will start believing. This is a big lie that is told. Many people of many different societies start accepting it and believing it. Here in Trinidad and Tobago, it has reached our shores for a very long time. But now I think it's time for God's people to tell the truth in love, not to be hateful, not to be disrespectful toward any human being, because all of us are human beings and all of us have problems, all of us have issues. It might not be that one of the LGBTQ that they, that they are clamoring for and, and that movement, but some of us have different issues. Some people have different problems. But by God's grace, I trust as we preach the truth in love, that God's word would speak to every heart. Please take heed to the word of God. Because one day, you must stand before God and give an account of yourselves before Him. God is holy, God is righteous, and in no way He will ever tolerate sin. It doesn't matter if it's accepted by society or not. His standards are here to stay. And it will not be moved, though we think otherwise. Even though we think otherwise. By God's grace this morning, I, take, I trust that you will take these few simple words. Examine it. A lie that is told for too long. A lie that is told for too long. I trust by God's grace. That you examine your heart this morning. And people who are viewing this live stream, send this message out to everyone. I trust by God's grace that this message would fall on some heart, but resonate deep in some soul that that person would come to know Christ before time changes to eternity. It is our prayer as God's people that we continue to share the message of grace and love and hope even though we may speak about the things that is contrary to the word of God. The truth, don't be afraid of the truth. Don't be afraid of the truth. It might hurt, it might step on your toes, it might ruffle your feathers. But it's the truth that will set your, your heart free. 
It is the truth of the word of God that help us escape eternal judgment. Let's pray this morning. Father, we thank you at this time. Lord, we bless your name for it is good. For your mercies endures forever. Lord, we want to thank you at this time for your mercies. We want to thank you for your word. We want to thank you, Lord, for those who are joining us via live stream. We want to thank you, Lord, for those who are listening. Lord, we give you praise and honor and glory. I pray that the simplicity of these words, without having said too much at this time, I pray by God's grace that you will use these simple words to reach some lost heart and cause your word to resonate deeply in the hearts and lives of thy people as well as we take an introspective look as how we go about spreading the love of God. Lord, have your will and way. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen and amen. God bless you. May God keep you, cause his face to shine upon you, and give you his peace. May, the, may you join us again next Sunday morning as we share the truths of the will of God with you. God bless you, and have a great day.